Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing show, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. More commonly referred to as bluegill or brim, have evolved together along with largemouth bass, existing side by side in a natural predator-prey relationship both species reproducing and preying effectively in warm, slow-flowing, often vegetated areas of lakes and ponds across North America. Bluegill are prolific spawners and provide an abundant food source for the largemouth's piscivorous feeding behavior, often observed shoaling, swimming independently, but in such a way that they stay connected, forming a social group. Visually, their relationship with largemouths appears relaxed and serene. However, when one suddenly flees from the group or displays an injured behavior, this abrupt movement instinctively triggers the largemouth's immediate pursuit. To catch this predator, present the prey. Whoa, where's that one going? <laughs> Dining on shell crackers. Approximately 1,500 miles southwest of their home state of Michigan, the Hook and Look crew have arrived in Central Texas. Strike King Lure Company president and majority owner, John Barnes has persuaded Kim to come join him on one of the many private ranches in this region. Although primarily used to raise livestock, it's the small fertile lakes which dot this landscape that sparks a fisherman's interest. And the two set out in hopes of Roping a few doggies. Well, he's going 100 miles better. Ooh, that's a better fish. Yeah. Tell you what, he's... I'll bet that one for you. That's a decent fish, heck yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Tell you what, that thing hit it and was going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I don't know if I was going to be able to catch up with him. All right. Good job, John. Well, he ate it down deep. The old hack attack, heavy car flipping hook wasn't going to let go of him. Pretty fish. We're gonna catch big ones though. Oh yeah. There you go. Whoa, where's that, that, that one going? That's a better fish. That, gosh, he's going. That is a good, that is a real good fish. Ugh. He's coming up, he's coming up, it's a giant. Oh yeah. A giant. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I thought he was, why thought... is it that I think they're like twice the size? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was bigger than that too, the way, the way he, was... he took off like that. Not that there's anything wrong with him. He's pretty fish. Dining on shell crackers. Monster. Chunky. But he just, I mean, he was going. He was going. I don't know where he's going. Yeah. But he was headed there in a quick way. Now he was on that, that outside turn. Welcome to Hook and Look. The outside creek channel bends were just one of the productive areas where we caught better fish in this lake. Looking at the tree edge, you can visualize how the deeper creek channel serpentines through the standing timber. More importantly though, is that I caught that last fish right where the channel swings against the steeper bank. Upon our subsequent underwater investigation, we discovered that the laydowns along this bank were holding schools of bluegills, 
as were the scattered brush piles. The presence of ideal sized forage species and a deep water retreat created the perfect scenario for both swimming and pitching a Strike King Raid shellcracker. Don't go away. Kim and John continue to mimic the prey when Hook and Look returns. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Hummingbird, simply, clearly, better. Seagar, always the best. And by Boat U.S. Angler. Welcome back to the ranch. John Barnes, Texas rigs another shell cracker. And as if the action of this versatile lure isn't enough, he then tops the bait off with a little coffee scent for extra appeal. Big one, I'll be sitting on those trees. You think, yeah, they don't seem to be on those trees as much as they should be. Yep. <laughs> I got it. Oh, heck no, no, well, man. I'm sorry, look my at... reel was about to fall off. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'll show it to you. Sorry. <laughs> Well, it's apparent the coffee scent is working and things are getting a little crazy. Nevertheless, these two professionals are having fun and acting giddy as schoolboys. Here's Kim again. Although it appeared that the bass weren't positioned directly on the deep trees, they were, however, relating to the deep weed edge along the channel. The current weather conditions were warm, breezy, and stable, and these fish were out and about. If on the other hand we were subjected to a cold front and high pressure, the bass would have most likely held tighter to the wood or buried themselves deep within the abundant grass. By surveying the lip while utilizing hummingbird side imaging, you can quickly determine the irregularities in the weed growth along the edge. The thicker patches of coontail, which form points where the channel dropped from 8 to 20 feet, were our key productive targets. Although you can develop a knack of reading standing timber and distinguish the channel path, there's no question that the side imaging certainly is an asset in pinpointing the irregular sweet spots. And when you do, toss out a marker buoy or simply create a waypoint on your GPS mapping. This way you can reference these precise spots, return, and make your presentations accurately. <laughs> I had one hit me too. <laughs> he just swallowed it. Look at that. Wow. In addition, I think it's important to point out that there was a significant presence of bluegills around these fruitful areas along the deep weed edge as well. Remember, the availability of abundant forage is a must when it comes to locating productive sections of any body of water. <laughs> <laughs> you bring them in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not going to wait on you. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. These better fish, when they're getting it, they are eating. Oops, Come here. I'll tell you what. You trying to hug them? Or what are you trying what? to do? Yeah, I'm trying to get control of You got one? Yes, I got one too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, John. That's one thing about them. I know you're fishing this swimming style with a weighted hook, but these hack attack heavy cover flipping hooks will get them. Here's a deep mine. <laughs> oh. You know, all, all kidding aside, there would not have been a hook and look show without your involvement. Really? And, well. the, and that's what got us off from square one. Now we're in our sixth season. That's unbelievable. And uh, we certainly appreciate Strike King support, that's for darn sure. And well, we're, we, you know, we're thrilled to be associated with you guys. You all do a great job. And just the unique perspective that you bring with all the underwater footage is, I mean, it's great for lures. I mean, people, 
I think have a vision of what they think a lure is doing under the water, but y'all show exactly what it's doing. Yeah. And so that's neat. And we, uh, we love your show and love, love what y'all do. There's more hooking and looking from Central Texas coming right up. Stay with us. Welcome back to Hook and Look. If you've just joined us, Kim is fishing on a ranch lake in Central Texas with Strike King Lure Company President John Barnes. John shares some advice in regards to rigging today's featured lure, the new Rage Shellcracker. I was really looking forward to filming with Kim today because first of all, he's a heck of a nice guy, but secondly, we're fishing a new bait by Strike King called the Rage Shellcracker. So first time I've fished it, and what I learned today is that there's a lot of ways you can fish it. The first way we fish it is uh, with a weighted hook. This is a six aught quarter ounce weight on the shank of the hook. And one thing that's critical is that you make sure you rig the bait straight. You go through the nose, out the belly where the hook slide is, pull it up, reverse it, and you put it back in towards the tail end of the hook slot and then back up through the back. And so you've got the hook exposed laying on the back, but one thing is critical is you make sure that the weight along the hook, the, the shank of the hook is in the middle of that hook slot, because if it's on one side or the other, the bait won't run properly. And you also got to make sure you pluck the tails on the, on the shell cracker because that's where the action is. And if you leave them together, they won't have the action. But this is a neat bait, uh, fishing it like a swim bait, essentially with this weighted hook was one of the ways we caught fish today. Boop, 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 boop. That's a good one. Nice fish. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty fish. He did it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it seems like they're up in that shallow stuff. They are. They're kind of on the inside edge of the grass line, it seems like. Yeah. As much as anywhere. Thank you. Pretty fish. You bet. Thank you. <clears throat> when swimming the shell cracker, John and I both experienced the best success by employing a stop and go retrieve, steadily reeling the bait as if it were a fleeing bluegill, then suddenly stopping the bait, allowing it to slowly fall. The pursuing bass would inhale the shell cracker the moment you stopped it. There's one. Good? Nope. I mean, I don't know. He's, he's not a big one, I don't believe. But he's oh, not he's a bad one. He's a good one. <laughs> he was... That's what, when you're used to catching nine pound fish, you know, <laughs> these fours and fives. Come here. Nice fish. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> now he was up really shallow. And you know what? I was doing the start and stop pattern like you were. You were That's talking about? Good salmon fish. The old shell cracker. Awesome. Pretty. Cut him loose and try to get it on. That is a versatile bait. They like this thing. I mean, it's something different. The shell cracker is something different. You don't, you don't see it out there. Brand new. That's it. You know, and that's, that's something about Strike King is that every year you've come out with some ingenious little product, something new every year, and that, that's part of your success. Kim, new products are absolutely critical to, you know, Strike King's uh, business, and that's why we, you know, sponsor and have such a good relationship with a lot of the top name pro fishermen and a lot of the top name TV personalities and everything. We take input from everybody, and we're always trying to improve our product line, come out with new products, and like, you know, today fishing the shell cracker, it's a brand new bait for 2013 and it's, uh, you know, really unique because <clears throat> you can truly fish it. You can, it's like several baits within one. You can fish it a lot of different ways. So, uh, now we're always striving to come out with new and quality products. That's the, that is the key for us is we're not trying to come out with gimmicks. We're trying to come out with quality fish catching baits. Whoa, 
Yes, I got him. That's a good fish. <laughs> he hit it right at the surface, man. <laughs> Look at that fish. That's a good one. <laughs> you got any buddies with him? <laughs> Hang on. He's strong, isn't it? He is a good one. You get down in the moss? Oh, he did. There he is. <laughs> oh, he sure did. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a nice fish there. Oh, man. That's by far the biggest one so far. And we've got salad. Lots of it. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Uh, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's a fat one. That is a dandy. Dandy stuck back in the throat. Whoa. Look at that. Look at the belly on him, huh? Isn't that nice? Pretty fish. Texas, down on the ranch. Down on the ranch. Great. I'm gonna bump us out here, sweetie. Yeah. Go. You ate that thing by cracky. By cracky. Shell cracky, that is. So, is this what they mean by the term ranch hand? We'll be right back. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by PowerPole. Swift, silent, secure. Deep Blue Coffee. Dive in. Ranger Boats. Still building legends, one at a time. And by Evinrude E-Tech. Power, performance, and 300 hours with no dealer scheduled maintenance. Strike King's been in the polarized sunglasses business for over 30 years. And in 2013, we're very excited to introduce a brand new line of polarized sunglasses called Strike King S11s. And the reason for the number 11 in the name is that each pair of sunglasses has 11 layers in the lens. One of the layers is an anti-reflective coating on the inside of the lens. And what that does is prevent light from coming in over your shoulder or behind you from reflecting into your eyes. Also, one of the other neat features is that each lens has a super hydrophobic coating, which prevents water spots, water buildup. If you're running down the lake and you have spray, it literally repels the water. And water spots are what collect dust and dirt, which causes you to have to clean your glasses more often than you would like. Another feature is, I'm sure you can tell, is the we've got a bi-gradient mirror treatment on the top and the bottom of each lens. That prevents light from coming in at a high angle as well as bouncing off the water, but at the same time providing ultimate clarity in the middle there where you can see stumps, fish, grass, etc. And the best part about Striking's new S11s is that they're very affordable. Good one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> I should know better. <laughs> I should know better. Even ask. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't tell. He was another one of those that just grabbed it and ran straight to the boat. You are a shell cracker, firecracker. I'll tell you, that's the neat thing about this bay is you can fish it so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, we're both fishing it. Uh, with a weighted hook right now, but we've been flipping it. And you, I'm sure you can Carolina rig it and all kinds of different ways. Yep. One of the most significant aspects to any lure presentation is utilizing the correct fishing line for the conditions. And today is by far no exception. From our underwater point of view, you can easily determine the need for more than just your average fishing line. With that said, when John and I were horizontally swimming the shell cracker over and around the wood and heavy vegetation, 20 pound Tatsu double structure fluorocarbon performed superbly, offering exceptional knot and impact strength, together in a low visible line. However, for our vertical presentation, deep within the heart of the gnarly cover, we stepped up to the unparalleled strength and abrasion resistance of 50 pound Seaguar Kansan Braid. These are fun bait. Definitely need to get a bunch of them. <clears throat> yep. You're gonna go through them. But... Go through them and 
But I mean, <laughs> that's, what, fish that's why you buy them. Exactly. That's why you buy them? Why you going fish. fishing to catch fish? Look at that! Oh, look at I that jacket! Look at the eye! <laughs> look at the size of this one! Oh, that's a big bucket! <laughs> that is a, that is a Texas hog! Oh! We call that a mule. We call that one Lone Star. <laughs> Lone Star, a mule. Yes, that is a pretty one there, Kim. That is. Oh, he fouled it off that. That log off over there. I'm gonna get my line up. You, you saw uh, you saw him hit, right? <laughs> yeah. It was so cool. He just come up, not violent, just real just, slow. Just sucked it right in. Eating shell crackers. I guarantee you, that's what the majority of their food is. There's here. no question. There's no question. They like bluegill. Ah, uh, yeah. Mmm. And that. That's why we do this. <laughs> Boy, that's the truth. Hey, I just want to express my sincere gratitude to John Barnes and everyone at Stray King Lure Company for their friendship and support of Hook and Look. They are great people with indisputable products. Coming up on our next episode, we're joined by Traverse City Bass Guide Ben Wolf, who just happens to be the founder of Deep Blue Coffee. Autumn smallie fishing can be challenging, especially when the gales of November come early. We'll cope with the blow and drink a cup of joe next week on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.